Did you know that you can use shader nodes in Blender to turn an image of a clock like this into an infinite spiraling clock like this? Keep watching to learn how. Begin by loading an image of a clock using the Images as Planes add-on, link in the description. Preferably a clock without second, minute, and hour hands. In my case, I'm using a render of a clock from my old Brain in a Vat video. I've got the image sitting in the XY plane, which is the default, and I've placed the camera directly above it, looking down, and moved it into a position so that the imported image is all I can see. Here are the camera transforms I used. Yours might be slightly different. Select your image plane, go to the shading workspace, and get into camera view. You can replace the principal BSDF with a simple emission shader. Add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node for the image texture. Use object coordinates. Now insert a second mapping node and space them apart a little. You can think of the first mapping node as a way of producing the coordinate system in which we're going to embed the spiral clock, like a big virtual sheet of graph paper with its center at the world origin. You can think of the second mapping node as serving two purposes. It's going to ensure that our clock image stays round and doesn't appear stretched, and it's going to shift our clock so that it's perfectly centered. In order to see the distinction between the two, let's draw a thin white circle on our virtual graph paper. Add a mix shader node. Then add a vector math node and get it to compute the length of the vector output of the first mapping node. Then add a math node with the compare function and use that as the second shader input in the mix shader. Now tweak the parameters until you see a thin white circle. Now adjust the second mapping node to center the clock and make it more or less perfectly round. After adjusting the math node and the mapping nodes, I found that in my case, the white circle lines up with the outside of the clock when the second value in the math node is 0.4. This means that our clock has a radius of 0.4. That's a number we're going to want to remember. Now, the only part of the clock image we care about is everything between this outer radius of 0.4 and some inner radius. Let's keep things simple. Let's go with an inner radius, which is half the outer radius. So we care about a ring-shaped chunk of the clock image between a radius of 0.2 and 0.4. Let's quickly visualize what that ring looks like. Delete the math node and add two new ones. One of them using the greater than function, computing length greater than 0.2, and one of them using the less than function, computing length less than 0.4. Combine the outputs from these nodes with a new math node using the minimum function, and use that as the second shader. Now we can see where that ring-shaped chunk of our clock image is. By the end of this tutorial, we will have basically created a function that will tell Blender how to convert any point on our infinite virtual graph paper into a point somewhere within this ring. Let's begin with a simple function that does exactly that. It won't be a spiral just yet, but it will paint our entire virtual graph paper with the content of that ring. Get rid of the math nodes and the mix shader, so we're back to a simple emission shader. Connect the length node to a new math node using the modulo function. Get it to compute length modulo 0.2. In case you're not familiar with modulo, think of it as giving you the remainder when you divide length by 0.2. So as the length increases, it sweeps through the range 0 to 0.2 over and over and over forever. But that ring region we care about is between length 0.2 and length 0.4. So we can use another math node with the add function to increase the output by 0.2. Now it sweeps from 0.2 to 0.4 instead of 0 to 0.2. So if you think of every point on our graph paper as a vector extending out from the center to a certain distance in a certain direction, this bit of math here is computing how short we should make that vector so that it lands inside our ring-shaped region. Here's how we can do the actual shortening. Put another vector math node between our two mapping nodes and set it to the scale function. This node lets us shrink or expand a vector by whatever amount we like, while keeping its direction the same. 
The trick here is to scale by 1 over the length times our modulo math, like this. Now we have our entire virtual graph paper painted with the colors from our clock image, but only colors taken from that ring-shaped region, containing the clock numbers and the outer rim in a repeating pattern. Next, let's convert this to a spiral. We'll do that by having each layer in this clock onion gradually shift so that by the time it's traveled a full 360 degrees, it perfectly lines up with the next layer in the onion. We're calculating length here, and we're using it for two slightly different purposes. Where it feeds into the modulo node, we're using it in order to calculate the desired length of each vector. Where it feeds into the divide node, we're using it as the actual length of the vector. Let's split that up into two length nodes, renaming one to be actual length and the other desired length. This is not necessary, but I like highlighting the distinction this way. There are two nodes here where we're using the value 0.2. They're not both 0.2 by coincidence. It's the same 0.2, the one number that dictates the size of the ring-shaped region in our clock image. Let's use a value node so that we have that number in just one place. Now we're going to insert a bit of math that will tell us, in a sense, how far around the circle any given point is in a clockwise direction. Basically, the angle or direction of the point from the center. But instead of the angle being measured in degrees from 0 to 360, or radians from negative pi to pi, we're going to get a value that goes from 0 to 1. Move away from the nodes we've created so far, add two reroute points, and connect them. Between them, insert a separate XYZ node and three math nodes. Set the first math node to the arctan2 function. This function takes the X and Y coordinates of a vector and gives you its angle or direction in radians. A value of negative pi is the downward direction, a value of negative pi over 2 is to the left, and so on. Just plug in the x and y outputs from the separate x, y, z node. The remaining two math nodes will convert the radian value to a number between 0 and 1. First we'll use the add function to add pi. You can type the word pi, by the way, and Blender will understand. This shifts our radian value so it's between 0 and 2 pi. Next use the divide function to divide by 2 pi. Again, Blender understands if you type 2 times pi, like this. These four nodes together can take an input vector and output its direction. Select the nodes, right-click and choose Group to convert them into a node group. Press N to open the sidebar where we can name the input vector and name the output 0 to 1. Press Tab to get back to our shader nodes, and let's name this new node group Direction. We can delete those two reroute points now. Let's plug our virtual graph paper mapping node into this new direction node. Now, we know that each layer in the clock onion has a width of 0.2. So let's shift our desired vector length gradually as it goes around in a circle, so that when it goes around once, it is shifted by exactly 0.2 to perfectly line up with the layer next to it. Add a math node to multiply our new direction value by 0.2. This will be the amount of the shift. Now use another math node to subtract that from our desired length as it's being fed into the modulo node. Now we've got a spiral. However, it's not quite right, is it? Moving away from the center, it spirals forever. But right at the center, it just abruptly stops. We want a spiral that goes to infinity at the center. We can do that with a math node set to the divide function. Feed our desired length node into it to compute 1 over length. Now it spirals to infinity at the center. It's a bit too unbalanced for my taste, so let's change the number 1 to a smaller number. I just prefer how it looks that way. However, the infinite spiral seems to get thinner and thinner as it moves inward, in a way that I don't like. There's an easy fix for that. One more math node with the power function using an exponent of 0.3 looks a lot better. You've probably noticed that all the numbers on the clock got flipped upside down when we made the image spiral to infinity at the center. There's an easy fix for that. Recall that we were sweeping through our ring-shaped region from radius 0.2 to 
to radius 0.4. We're still doing that, but we're doing it as we head toward the center, instead of as we move away. We can sweep through that ring in the opposite direction by subtracting the modulo value from 0.2, just like this. Next, let's address the fact that all the numbers on the clock line up with the corresponding numbers on adjacent layers of the spiral. In other words, when the spiral goes around exactly 360 degrees, we've gone around the clock exactly 360 degrees as well. We can change that. Let's add another mapping node right before the one that feeds directly into our image node. Notice that if I change the Z rotation value on that mapping node, the clock rotates. The spiral itself isn't rotating, but the clock that sits inside the spiral is rotating. That's exactly the kind of rotation we want to play with. Add a Combine XYZ node feeding into that rotation socket so that we can control the Z rotation value. We're going to compute a rotation amount that varies just a little from one layer in the spiral to the next. Let's add a math node with the multiply function so that we can control the severity of whatever rotation amount we compute. For now, set it to multiply by zero so we won't see any extra rotation and we'll come back to it later. Remember this subtract node right before the modulo node? We pass through one layer of the spiral every time this value increases or decreases by 0.2. Let's use that to number the layers of the spiral by dividing that value by 0.2. Use a math node with the divide function, like this. Next, let's throw away everything after the decimal by using a math node with the truncate function. Now each layer in the spiral gets assigned an exact whole number. Remember our direction node generates a number that goes from 0 to 1 as we go once around the spiral. Let's add that to the whole number that we've assigned to each layer in the spiral. Now we have a number that increases gradually by 1 every time the spiral winds through 360 degrees. Perfect. That can be our rotation value, like this. Now you can play with the value in the multiply node to control the relationship between how many degrees the spiral turns versus how many degrees the clock turns, like this. Finally, let's modify the colors to make things a little more vibrant. Insert a separate hue saturation value node and a combined hue saturation value node between the image texture and the emission shader and connect the saturation and value sockets between them. Let's start with the value socket and use it to make each layer in the spiral darker on its outer edge and brighter on its inner edge. We can multiply the current value by the output from our modulo node. Then we can pass that through a color ramp and adjust the sliders until we find something we like. For the hue, Let's add another one of those direction nodes that we created earlier and feed it the output from our most recently added mapping node and make that the hue value. That created a rainbow effect, but we can barely see it because there isn't much saturation. Insert a color ramp for the saturation and adjust the sliders to really bring out the rainbow colors. And that's it. Now we've got a shader that converts our image of a clock into an infinite spiral with a variety of parameters inside the shader nodes that we can play with to change the look of the spiral. Have a good one.